Well, a step towards progress on the national stage for the Cherokee people, but two out of three of the U.S.'s federally recognized tribes disagree over who should represent them in Congress. Here's more on the path towards a Cherokee congressional delegate and the confusion that may be holding it back. All three of the federally recognized tribes have a right to the congressional delegate in the Treaty of New Echota, as well as the Treaty of Hopewell. The idea that we ought to be ceding ground uh, when there's no legal or factual basis for it is absurd and it's getting offensive. A dispute over what the facts are is at the center of an ongoing fight for a Cherokee congressional delegate. Chuck Hoskin Jr., principal chief of the Cherokee Nation, says it was his tribe's push that brought this issue back to the forefront. But really, this began in earnest in August of 2019 when I named Kim Teehee as our delegate delegate when our council or legislative branch confirmed her unanimously. So we have been pushing and pushing and educating members of Congress. That education and push tied to the 1835 Treaty of New Echota that forced Cherokees from their homelands while promising a delegate in Congress. United Katua Band Congressional Delegate Victoria Holland says her tribe's interpretation of that treaty is that the UKB and the Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians also deserve seats at the table. If Congress seats a Cherokee delegate, they need to seat all three delegates at the same time. Ultimately, if there is only one delegate, then that delegate has to be approved by the three Cherokee tribes. It can't be just one. Chief Richard Sneed with the Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians agreeing with that stance, saying in a letter published last month, quote, it is impossible to honor this treaty with the Cherokee people without involving and addressing all tribal nations that now represent the Cherokee people. The Cherokee Nation questioning the timing of this disagreement. It does do a disservice, though, to all of Indian country because what it does is it undermines the Cherokee Nation effort to secure a treaty right. Chief Hoskin Jr. says this dispute may also be causing confusion in Congress. Anytime they hear there's multiple claims of, of Cherokee tribes to one right, they often uh, sort of look and say, well, we just really don't know. Holland acknowledging the Cherokee Nation's work. This is certainly something that has been brought to the forefront by the Cherokee Nation of Oklahoma. But says what it's asking for isn't fair. We each have separate interests and we each have separate objectives. We can't all be mashed into this one little cookie cutter thing. We're very different. Now, it is important to note that the path to get one seat right now is still ongoing, let alone three. Holland says there has been some discussion among leaders of all three tribes about having a meeting to decide what's best. The Cherokee Nation says there is no middle ground here. Any potential seat belongs to the Cherokee Nation.